Hello, hi, I'm Patricia McNeely. I am an Illumined Blu-ray Twin Flame from Chicago, Illinois. How are you today? I hope you're doing well. So today what I want to talk to you about is your Twin Flame courage and prudence and this energy. This energy is a five, which means transformation. There are things being transformed on the other side of your union, which you might be aware of. You might not know everything, but you might be feeling some things, and you may be feeling some other things too. There's a lot of a sense of dying. There's a lot of people getting sick, but at the same time, it just doesn't feel like you're sick. It feels like you're dying, and there's a reason for it, and there's a reason with your twin too. And I'm here to tell you, please take time. That means pause if you need to, but do not abandon your struggle. Get through it. Hey, don't abandon your twin flame union. Don't abandon it. Don't do anything foolish. I'm here to say this as mama bear. <laughs> I'm here to say this to you in terms of the bigger picture of a lot of the things that have gone into the setups and not only this, but a lot of the hard work that you've already done. Transformation, allow the transformations to take place. Have your strength and courage. This is, this is the courage that goes with the energy of people who have been trapped, held prisoner, stuck in situations, Sometimes thinking there's no way out, and yet your courage and hope gets you through it. Sometimes things are a struggle, and it feels like a struggle to a lot of us. It sometimes feels like you're pushing against the tide, like things will never give way. And what I want to let you know is this energy is also about not going to Tibet and spending seven years in Tibet to just receive enlightenment. No. Things are going to go a lot swifter for you, and they are much more for more people than just a few people who might be able to afford to do that. Some people cannot take that much time off. Some people have other responsibilities and families and children, or maybe you're concerned and you're maybe upsetting yourself needlessly about how are you going to get all of your children together? Where are you going to live? How are you going to do this? How do we stay together? How come some people get to stay together and they live together? Is this just for a select few? No. In fact, some of the people who are together are actually simmering and waiting with each other while a lot of their metaphysical stuff has not happened yet. For other people, they've had a lot of zis, boom, bang, a lot of metaphysical things happening, and they haven't physically been with their twin quite a bit. And some people say, well, what goes with that? Do not buy some of the stuff that is out there being said. What I mean by that is don't accept it. You are here, and I've had people lately, a lot of people say, but Patricia, you know, maybe I shouldn't have hope. Is that really true? Should we never have hope? Should we never, ever, ever, ever have hope? So look, let's look at some of the great things that have happened because people have, have had hope. Now look, we just recently had a lot of energy, and it's not just the feminine energy, it's the energy of people who formerly have been held trapped or enslaved and they're pushing they're pushing for equality but they're not just pushing for equality they're pushing for other levels of everyday equality not just something on a book something on a sign they're pushing for that females are pushing sexual predators are being you know whether or not it's true and it is true in a lot of cases, but who's here to know who's projecting what onto whom that might have happened to them in a different timeline. And yet that energy has been on 
done untrapped. So why should somebody not hope? Okay. It takes a lot of courage to keep hoping every single day when you feel stuck or trapped in a situation. But if you're really stuck or trapped, this is like someone who's a prisoner of war or pr a prisoner in some kind of camp or someone who's been kidnapped or someone who has been held hostage in a situation. And some of you are veering into the point where you're going so much backwards that you're the one holding yourself hostage. And you have to really find, feel that. Is that what you're here for anymore? Is the door open? Is the gate open? Are the fears gone? Maybe, maybe not. And you have to have the courage to feel it. But the key to this is not doing anything hasty. And as a twin flame, you go within. You go within for your strength, for your courage, because that is what the love does. If you don't know how, learn how to connect with your higher combined divine masculine and divine feminine. So a lot of people talk about, oh, the divine masculine is here. Yes, the divine masculine is here. In fact, the divine masculine has been here. It just hasn't really been able to fully connect. And a lot of people will take one look at someone and say, ooh, they're, that's kind of messy. That person is kind of messy. There's a lot of cleanup here that needs to take place. Clean up on aisle three, and I don't want to do it. I'm not willing to roll up my sleeves anymore and do it. But maybe you don't have to roll up your sleeves. Maybe there's another better softer, gentler, and much more delightful way to do that. So if you're in your um, situation and you feel like you and your twin have encountered and you've met and you've activated and, you know, it seems like you go away from each other, okay? And one is saying, I don't think we're ever going to get this together. I just don't know what to think, what to do. I think I'm losing hope. I think I better just see. And meanwhile, my biological clock is running out. And the other one says, I don't really know what that was all about. I don't know. Is that someone I'm supposed to be with? Is that, but why did it get so intense so quick? I mean, I felt all these things. I felt like I should get married and make all these decisions in a split second. And I want to live my life. And I'm confused now. And, and and I'm not sure if I ever wanted kids, but, but now suddenly I find myself feeling what, what would our kids look like and all kinds of stuff that I'm feeling. And she's saying, maybe I just need to go backwards. Well, the key difference in this energy is there is no going back. You're past the point of no return. These people will keep springing back and springing back. And what do they do to be up close and personal and get things shifted because this is a transformational energy. Gone are the years of having to receive your enlightenment at the top of a mountain top and at the expense of all the other parts of your life, particularly if you have responsibility. So I already said that part, but how do you get the enlightenment and how do you get what's needed on a daily basis. What do you do in those moments where it feels like you're doing push, pull, push, pull, push, push, pull, push, pull. And you've push pulled so much that one's way over here and you are thinking you may never ever see that person again. What do you do in that situation? And there's a lot of other things to know about why we're doing these things at this level. Why do some people feel like they are a rescuer? Why do some people always feel like they're a victim or something's happened to them way back in history? Why do some people have so much emotional pain and other people seem very blithe about it? And a lot of this goes to the backstory of ancient history and what happened and what no longer works and what does work. And I'm here to let you know that, yes, there has been quite a bit of setup. So let's take another situation. World War II. World War II was a major world conflict. Hundreds of countries involved in it. And a lot of it took place 
in two sides, both the Atlantic and the Pacific, okay? And you have some repeats there. You have Atlantis and Lemuria, and you have a lot of the same mindsets and a lot of the same repeats of history. But what were some of the other things that happened? Well, you have had a lot of damaged people, a lot of people with damaged subtle bodies. How do those get healed? And how do you then take people that maybe were interned in some kind of a camp, whether they were a soldier and a prisoner of war, or they were an innocent bystander, and do you tell them don't have any hope? You might as well kill yourself right now. And by the way, that is not something that is for twin flames anymore. But how do you stop it? How do you prevent it? How do you stop those feelings from coming up where one person just wants to run and or escape or avoid and believes that they're not here to do anything? Yeah, I don't think, I think we're twin flames. Yeah, I don't think I want one of those. See you. Bye. And people do say that. They say, yeah, I don't think I want one of those, as though it's just some abstract thing that you can say yes or no when it's very intense for certain people. So what you do is you do take yourself. This means you and your twin because you are your twin. Your twin is you. Take yourself seriously. You are only newly here. Okay, get through it. You're only just getting over the threshold now. Many people are getting hung up on um, a lot of the other things having to do with this journey. Are you on a twin flame journey? For a lot of you, if you felt drawn to this information, you may begin doubting it. However, the doubts really mean maybe you don't know what to do. Maybe you felt like you hit that wall and you're suddenly at a point where you're saying, you know what, I'm fresh out. I can't feel, I don't, I'm not getting proper guidance. I don't know what I'm doing. And I've spent a lot of time and energy into this already. I think I'm just going to go crawl up into a corner and just take a nap. Okay, if you need to take time, take time. But if you're upset enough and you may be feeling angry, you may be feeling some anger at your twin. Okay, good. Get angry. And get it ang angry and get it out. Okay? Because there's no place for anger in your union, but you will you are entitled to feel your feelings. You are entitled. But what actions do you take upon those feelings? That is the key difference because 5 means transforming transformation, transforming the way you do things because it feels different. How do you get it to feel different? Some of it you take time, some of it you get through it. For some of you, that anger might be the first time you felt angry in a long time. You may feel angry and then weepy and then feel like you're dying. And those are all valid things and you maybe not equating that with love and you might scratch your head and say, but what does this have to do with love? Why all this stuff? This goes to the backstory. So if you would like to know more about what to do about it, that is what I am here to do. Now, I am a Ron and Staff Union. A lot of people say, what is that? We have the dimensional level whereby we have created the, and it's not just me, it is several Ron and Staff Unions, created the 5D template of new relationship, or you could say it the new template of 5D relationship. What does that mean? What that means uh, in a very basic way is that you and your twin now have ways of behaving with each other which are entirely new. It also means you're not getting to the fifth dimension without each other. So, you know, the thing, the other thing that will happen is that you will find that what you may have thought was lost is gone. You may have also thought that maybe a soulmate was a better choice, but all that glitters is not gold. It just isn't, okay? The gold is inside your twin. That's where the gold is, and that is where everything you need to get healthy and to get yourselves 
back to a place that your body remembers, even if you don't have those memories. Your body remembers it. And it's not comfy here. And it doesn't want to stay stuck here. And some of you are feeling that detachment from Earth. You know, you're feeling things like, oh, Earth food. Oh, yeah, I, I have no enthusiasm whatsoever about football or baseball or basketball. I have no enthusiasm for the award shows. I have no enthusiasm for, you know, my children's school play. I don't know where that went, but I just don't right now. And that's okay. It's valid, but it'll shift again. It'll shift again because this is transformative energy. And by, um, by January 31st, when we hit that second full moon, I want to have you in good shape for what's coming up in February. So, I do have another webinar coming up. This is a two-part webinar on surrender. How do you surrender and what does surrender truly mean? I'm going to talk about that in there. Because surrender doesn't mean getting steamrolled. Surrender doesn't mean rolling over and playing dead. Surrender doesn't mean taking every abuse that you have been dished out. Surrender doesn't mean going wah, 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 and retreating back into some other situation. Okay? It just doesn't. It's very different. And it also is transformative. Surrender, um, people equate that with a sense of being vulnerable. But what are you vulnerable to? And why would that disturb people? Why would it disturb people to be vulnerable? Yes, because of what we're seeing, because of the predators. Because when people have seen a chink in the armor, the ego mind says, aha, uh -huh. okay? And this is not intended to happen in your union. So what else about surrender can actually help you to help your twin and help you get together and go beyond hope, beyond faith, okay, to actual experiences? Okay, so what does it feel like to be liberated? What does it feel like to feel the freedom? What does it feel like to finally know certain situations are over? I'm sure a lot of people when they were released or when they saw other people show up, I mean, they just about probably just fell on the ground from a leaf. The overwhelming emotion and the necessity to have to live in certain ways and just get by and just get by and just subsist at a minimal level. That's not what you're here for. That is not what anyone is here for. Anyone. Not the children. Not children that are stuck from foster home to foster home. Not children that are, you know, there's a lot of people that will be shifting around to absorb all of the extra to create a balance in the systems where things get properly worked out, where the funding goes to the right places, okay? Now, you're a part of that, but you do it by focusing on yourself. Take yourself seriously. You are only newly here over the threshold, okay? We started closing the old paradigm back in September of 2017. Now, what you're going to find is that for if you met your twin in 2013, 2014, two, I'll go back a little further, 2012, 2013, 2015, you're going to continue having a little bit of push-pull, and it's okay, but you're going to have to find the ways to get along. Why not come and find out the Twin Flamey way? Because there's two of you. And this is why I teach Twin Flames. This is not teaching someone to just be a nicer person. And by the way, yes, being a Twin Flame and being the love makes you a nicer person. But that's not where it ends. You didn't meet each other just to be a nicer person. You didn't meet each other to just, you know, give to charity or find something that you can overextend yourself in again. You met each other for a reason. Only one of you pretty much got activated. What about your other half? Okay, so come and find out because some of the things 
where it ends where people are thinking that's it I mean they might as well tell you go home okay go home it's not for you anymore that's not what you're here for you are here to be loved to be loved properly you deserve and you deserve the best and your twin is you, the other you take yourself seriously this is new so if you want to join my surrender webinar I have part one on February 1st that is a Thursday morning here in Chicago it's 8 a.m. it's the afternoon in the UK and Europe and in um, some other places it would be in the evening or at night and February 2nd which is Friday a Friday evening here in Chicago that's the next day in Australia and then part two will be on Sunday February 4th at 9 a.m. that's the afternoon early afternoon in the UK it is early morning on the west coast of the United States or um, on the East Coast it's about mid morning on a Sunday and February 7th and that is on a Wednesday night at 5 p.m. and the cost is $80 for both segments now you get a lot of material in there what we do is I have a presentation of material I open the floor for questions and answers and I get you back to feeling your own twin it's all about you and your twin it's you and your twin and you and your twin and you and your twin and a lot of questions get answered and I answer the question and every answer is twin flame and you have another question and the answer is twin flame well Patricia why does this happen it's happening for your twin flame union Patricia why did I get sick or have an inflammation so you could be with your twin flame twin flame twin flame twin flame however I go into much more detail than that and I just I don't respond just with twin flame but a lot of things that happen to people on the journey have to do with you being with your twin flame as odd as it may seem okay so um, to sort of recap here what I'd like to let you know is that you and your twin flame are here to do this and be who you came here to be be the best you can be which is a gradual thing okay if you feel like you've hit a wall if you feel like you need some extra help if you want to find out how to properly surrender and connect and learn how to commune and do heart communication with your twin not have an ego mind conversation with them or let your union be relegated to texts and emails and then wonder where did the love and feeling go it went back into the ethers that's where it went if you're seeing your twin skitter around and get confused and hang out with other people and you'd like to be able to stop that and put a stop to it because you're feeling some of it come and join and find out how if you and your twin are together and you're wanting to get to the next stage of your union come and join and find out so yes I do readings I do sessions and I do energy body work I do energy work on people not just one of you what I do works with both of your subtle bodies both of you because there's two of you like it or not there's two of you so if you would like to continue getting deeper even if it's across miles even if it's across you know what feels like an entire dimension or an entire ocean is separating you how would you like to do that how would you like to bring it a lot closer because you didn't get this close to each other in the entire universe to go drift off again and please don't put yourself back into old situations now if you're in a situation and you're wondering how to get out of it you're not sure how would I go about um, breaking away from this how would I get my elderly parents set up how would I get uh, my kids situated how would I get my new house how would I get um, the uh, wherewithal for this or that 
How would I get us shifted? How do I get out of this old relationship? Or how do you get your twin out of some old relationship? Come and find out how, okay? Because it there is some things that only you can do. You're the one with the connections. Not everybody else, not the entire world. That's why you're, you are in this transformative space. Time to raise the bar. Time to set the expectations and meet the expectations. So, I hope to see you there. Please join me for Surrender on either February 1st or February 2nd. If you need a reading or su su uh, a session or body work, the links are down below. My website is www.twinflamesmerge.com and I am also doing a live class here in Chicago, February 24th and 25th. That's an all-day intensive body work and subtle body uh, work to get you together and chakra balancing. And there's quite a bit I cover in these. Thank you to everyone who's already joined. So. Are you still on a twin flame journey? Are you just finding out that this is a twin flame journey? Are you not sure you want to be on the twin flame journey? Okay? Maybe, maybe not. So I'm going to end this with a song that came to me, which actually happened because um, our son said to me, Mom, what were the 80s like? And I said, oh, okay. And I immediately thought of a song. Do you ever have your kids do that where they say, hey, what were the 60s like? And you go, ooh, free love. What were the 70s like? Ooh, disco. Oh, what were the 80s like? What were the 90s like? What were the 2000s like? What are the millennials like? Well, one day you might. So my, my immediate response was chains of love. How can I explain when there are few words I can choose? And how can I explain when words get broken? We used to talk about the weather, making plans for it together. Days would last forever. Come to me, cover me, hold me. Together we'll break these chains of love. Don't give up, don't give up. Together we'll be and baby break the chains of love. And then there's another great line in there where he talks about um do you remember once upon a time uh -huh, when there were open doors, an invitation to the world? Yeah, that's what you have. You have an invitation to the world, but you need the courage and don't do anything hasty and come and join. Come and find out what it's about. We laugh. Sometimes we cry a little bit and we release and I get you back to feeling your twin. So I hope to see you there. Have a wonderful week. Thank you. Bye now.